what is negotiation? Again, coming uh, to it, negotiation is not winning or losing, but negotiation is like a collaborative approach wherein everyone can have a win-win situation. So if you are going to focus more on only me, myself, then that would be a selfish motive. Correct. So a main main thing is to settle disputes and to reach to agreements between two or more parties. So that is the main thing about coming to uh, sitting down to negotiate is wherein all the parties come out with um, something that is beneficial. OK, so negotiations, negotiation skills are qualities that allow two or more parties to reach a compromise, right? So these are often uh, soft skills and include abilities such as communication, persuasion, of course, because you need to persuade them to agree with your, um, your objectives, to agree with your points, to agree with uh, the alternatives that you are offering them right and planning strategizing cooperating so understanding these skills is the first step to becoming a stronger negotiator so apart from understanding this negotiating skills i will also go ahead and explain the different styles of negotiation negotiation and then i will also share like an assessment with you so each one of you can fill that assessment and see what are your different styles so you can fill up, fill that up and then you can see what kind of negotiating style do you possess okay so key negotiating uh, negotiation skills communication essential communication skills uh, include identifying non-verbal cues. So what do you mean by these non-verbal cues that you can pick up from your, you know, from the other parties? What are non-verbal cues? Okay, so non-verbal cues are basically these, um, the body language that you can go ahead and understand and study but before even the words spill out of their mouths, by the way they are expressing themselves and the body language, you can kind of understand what they are going to go ahead with and what are they going to say next, right? So that's your nonverbal cues, expressing yourself in a way that is engaging. Uh, it is important to understand. It is important to understand the natural flow of conversation and always ask for feedback. Okay, so apart from this, what do you think, how can you actually say no in a negotiation? So say, uh, so say the relationship really matters to you, of the you know a business relationship but at the same time you're not really convinced and you have to say no to what they are putting forward to you so how are you going to tell them no making sure that of course the uh, relationship matters so you cannot like you know aggressively say no so you have to be very humble in the way you are putting across your points and in the way you even if you're walking out not uh, directly walking out on their face but saying no at a time little by little not directly saying no i um you know or these points are not valid or no this is not going to benefit me that kind but yes little at a time so towards the end of your uh, towards the end by the time you say one hour into the negotiation by the time you know you've reached one hour people kind of get it that you're not really convinced and you're still respecting and you're still um you know and giving them time to go ahead and explain and you are also putting forward your points and ultimately if it is no from your end and they kind of understand that yes you're being humble and it's not working out because it's not going to be beneficial right so okay that's again uh, the word humbly the key point over here then I want you to think of these different scenarios over you know the last uh, week the last sessions that you all were put uh, into different scenarios to negotiate so how could you actually say no but now you need to make sure you need to expose these alternatives to them only if you have a better alternative right so if i give you a scenario that you are getting say five lakhs for your car or let's just say be realistic for a second hand car you are going to sell your car and say uh, you are expecting to get three lakhs for your car now you may say see you know i'm giving it to you because probably 
uh, you know, uh, because you seem to be a good person and you were the first one who messaged me and, you know, texted me over Facebook on my ad saying that you were interested and stuff. So which is why, yeah, I don't mind, you know, uh, you know, selling it to you a, a little less. But to be frank, I'm actually getting three lakh twenty thousand from other parties. Now, this three lakh twenty thousand, what you are trying to put forward now, if this, you know, just uh, not between organizations and stuff. Yeah, OK, you may go ahead and expose. But when it comes to exposing these alternatives, um, it is considered as a fraud if you are going to give them an unrealistic uh, picture or if you're going to give them an alter expose your alternatives that are not really genuine. So this may come under fraud. So we need to be very wary as to exposing the alternatives. So expose the alternatives only if it is more fancy than what they are offering you. And uh, yeah, so especially between organizations and stuff, you need to be very wary. Otherwise, what's going to happen this is going to be considered a fraud. Yeah, so communication, persuasion, planning, and uh, strategizing, of course. OK, so what goes into strategizing? How is planning different from strategizing? Um, maybe like coming up, uh, be, being ready with different alternatives for strategizing. Okay, maybe. correct. Okay, so coming up with different alternatives, different. Um, so all of this you will work through your your whole planning process. You can go ahead with your checklist, right? So if you are working on your checklist, that's like a good amount of information you have ready with you before you're actually sitting to negotiate. And strategizing is, like you said, yes, having different alternatives and knowing when to go ahead and pitch in those alternatives at different intervals, correct? So planning is working on those different alternatives and strategizing is know when rightly to pitch in those alternatives. Cool? Okay. Now, types of negotiation, of course, we have, okay, so quickly, who remembers what is distributive and what is in integrative negotiation? From the previous session, what is distributive and what is integrative? So integrative is a collaborative approach, and you can say distributive is probably a selfish approach wherein you want 80% of the share and uh, you, are, you are just fine with 20% of benefit to the other party. So 80-20 is distributive and integrative is where it's a win-win situation being more collaborative. Okay, uh, management negotiations. So of course, the different types, you see different kinds of negotiations happening in the management, uh, co-worker, vendor, winning the, you know, tenders, uh, sales, all these are the different types of negotiation. And of course, there are different negotiations that happen uh, every day in each person's life. Let's not stress too much on that. Okay, so tips to improve your negotiation skills. So identify, yeah, so the main thing is always be assertive with your um, final goal in mind. So make sure that you stick to what the outcome should be and make sure you have the final goal. Like if I just have to give you a, a salary negotiation, right? If we are saying I'm asking for a 50% hike, now, how do you negotiate? If you are going to stress fully on the monetary terms, it's going to come across like you are very money-minded and you are kind of what you selfish. So now here, you need to focus on the aspects as to why you deserve an increment. So you will focus on all the aspects that, um, you know, that you have actually worked through um, uh, you know, how hardworking you are and all the points that have actually boosted the productivity because of your input, because of your ideas, because of your strategizing, your planning and all of that. So once you focus on all these points, then obviously the other person will automatically know that yes, you are worthy of getting an increment, but you will ask for 50%, of course, knowing that there is negotiation that's gonna happen between you and the HR. So you need to keep in mind that I'm not going to come down below say 25%, right? And focus on uh, the end goal. So on for identify the end goal, my end goal is say probably 50%, but I am going to focus on getting a 50%, but I'm going to settle down for 25%, not less than that. So practice 
building rapport, right? So this is also very essential. And what's the main uh, objective of a negotiation? The main objective of a negotiation is to build um, uh, relationships and it's not to tarnish relationships. Be willing to compromise, consider imposing time restrictions, take the multiple offer approach. So what do you mean by the multiple op offer approach? So your multiple offer approach basically means to say your bargaining chips. So exercise confidence, do not take it. Yeah, another thing is don't take anything personally in a negotiation, because if you take it personally, what's going to happen? Um, there's, it's just going to ruin relationships when a person says no to you it's not about you know trying to put you down but they are saying no to an offer and there's nothing to get so offensive and defensive about it understand your weakness and uh yeah so understand your weaknesses so how are you going to understand your weaknesses and practice on the same so there is this um, Gibbs reflective model. If you would have heard of this Gibbs reflective model, there is this very famous model in his book published, which is learning by doing. All right. So there is the cycle. So you can use it at any point in uh, your life or for any event, basically how to go ahead and improve. So when it comes to improve your negotiation skills, again, we can adapt this ref, uh, Gibbs reflective model that is learning by doing. So the first thing is you, so the first time you were, um, you know, the first time you were actually in a negotiation thingy and you will just go ahead and describe, okay, so this is what the negotiate, this was the first time me being a negotiator or me being a part of this negotiation, right? And you give a description. So what was the negotiation all about, right? So that is just your description. Then the second uh, stage in the cycle is how, what were your feelings and thoughts about it? So what were your feelings and thoughts, whether it was good or whether it was bad? That's, that's overall, like basically, what are your feelings and thoughts about it? Then you come down to the third uh, process or the third um, step which is what uh, which is like what have you learned out of it and how are you going to go ahead and analyze it making sure that the next time you are placed in the same kind of situation what are you going to uh, improve so you will say that yes today i was a part of the negotiation i had a lot of ideas in mind but somehow i couldn't pitch in those ideas or i didn't really know when to pitch in those ideas right so now you have understood your loopholes so the next time you are placed uh, so the next time you are again um, negotiating or a crew important role as a negotiator in a negotiation, then you would have learned from your previous mistakes or your weaknesses, understanding your weaknesses from your previous, um, uh, from your previous experience. And this time around, what's gonna happen? You would definitely work on where you were lagging, right? So this would just be a way to understand your weaknesses, where you were lagging. And the next time you're placed in the same kind of situation, what better are you going to do? Making sure this time you're coming out with a happy or a overall good experience. And then practice, okay. Okay, so this is just the same thing. Identify the final goal. What are the minimum terms you need? How much are you willing to negotiate? Uh, it's important you enter negotiations knowing what you want out of an agreement and how much you're willing to compromise. So while identifying your goal, like I told you, stick to what is your main goal and what is the minimum you are ready to accept. Practice building rapport. Successful negotiation requires you to effectively communicate not only your own goals, but also understand the other party's wants and needs as well. Of course, so uh, don't try to go ahead with the distributive approach. Instead, try to focus on an integrative uh, approach wherein it's a win-win situation for all. Be willing to compromise. Without compromise, it can nearly be impossible to reach an agreement. So... By preparing ahead of time, you will be ready. You will already have an idea of the terms you're willing to sacrifice. Okay, so uh, you cannot have most of the time. It does not go with you having 80% of the share. Of course, which uh, all of us would want to. 
But yeah, most often it does not really work that way. We need to be considerate to the other party as well. So which is why we need to kind of compromise. Consider imposing time restrictions. Setting a timeline on the negotiations mo motivates both parties to reach an agreement. If the terms cannot be met at the time, the two parties can take time to reevaluate their needs and return at a later date. So obviously a negotiation does not happen or does not com get completed within one particular meeting. There, there is recurring meetings that keep happening so that every time uh, you don't come out with a solution, you need time or you buy in more time to kind of reevaluate. Or if they've given you different alternatives, you want to do like a quick research and see if those alternatives kind of work for you. And then you can get back um, to them, right? Okay, so how to prepare for a negotiation. So what you want to gain? where you are willing to compromise, terms you refuse to accept, potential objections you may face, and all possible outcomes. So all of these, which we will definitely uh, go through during the checklist as well. Okay. Okay, so role of assertiveness and persuasion. One second. Persuasion is defined as an effort to influence an individual's behavior and making him or her believe what they are saying. You need to believe in yourself for others to believe you, of course. So even if you are, um, we spoke about earlier about putting these uh, alternatives to the others, right? So if it is a genuine alternative that we are uh, putting forward to them, of course, we are automatically going to uh, be confident. But if it's not like, a, you know, uh, what do you say, like an organization kind of a thing, it's just between two individuals where they are not going to hold you uh, or hold account for your fraud or whatever. So probably you can just um, give in different um, alternatives, right? So for that, you need to do your research well. You need to go ahead and be confident in the way you are uh, going ahead and going forward with your negotiation so that they kind of uh, understand where you are leading them to. There is no magic wand for confidence, but adequate knowledge of the subject is what makes you confident. Okay, so what do you mean by conflicts firstly? What are conflicts and what do you mean by conflict resolution? So conflicts are of course difference in opinions, different um, it's not about, you know, taking it personally, but yes, you wish to differ. So conflict resolution is very essential because um, if the conflicts are not sorted out, it may hamper the overall objectives and goals of the business. So conflict resolution can be defined as the informal or formal process that two or more parties use to find a peaceful solution to their dispute. So settling the disputes are conflict resolution is basically what you mean by conflict resolution. Conflict, so self-serving fairness interpretation. So rather than deciding what's fair from a position of neutrality, we interpret what would be, okay, so what are the different uh, reasons for conflicts to take place? You can think of any scenario and you can just give me the different reasons as to why conflicts really take place. If it is, um, you know, within your student council or if it is in an organization or if it is within a team. So why did conflicts generally take place? So ego is also a very, um, you can say probably one of the main uh, elements of, you know, one of the main reasons for conflicts to take place. And then overconfidence, ego, different perspectives, different ideologies, different thought process. Then what else? Now I'm going ahead with so uh, this roadmap because I see different goals and objectives. You are going ahead with a different roadmap because you see different goals and objectives, right? So different goals and objectives, correct? Then what else? Those are very nice, crucial points from your end. Okay. Oh, we've got escalation of commitment or different goals and objectives, different thought process, self-serving fairness interpretations. For example, departments, department heads are likely to, uh, to each think they deserve the lion's share of the annual budget. Okay, so disagreements about what's fair. Yeah, so basically when, uh, you know, your selfish motives come into the picture, 
that's when again conflicts take place over confidence then whether negotiators are dealing with a labor strike a merger or an argument with a colleague they are likely to irrationally escalate their commitment to their chosen course of action long after it has proven useful we desperately try to recoup our past investments past investments in a dispute such as money spent on failing to um one should play no role in the future yeah so different objectives different ideologies different uh, you know people coming with their own selfish um uh, selfish requirements uh, the goals the objectives and all of these would be the main reasons for why conflicts take place in the first place <laughs> okay so what do you think how can all these conflicts be um resolved now say if we are talking about ego if you are having a conflict because there is this other person who's not willing to agree with you because of his or her ego so how are you going to you know uh, fix this issue yeah See, compromise would not be an option if you end up compromising then you are always going to be on the loser's end correct because the person who is egoistic he his main motive is that yes he wants everyone else around him to compromise and we should not let him win because of his egoistic nature so exactly so proof or proof and facts like if at all they say that yes i want to choose this road map so putting in a why so you say yes i totally you know using words um rather than saying you know being harsh you need to compromise not on the outcome but you need to compromise in the way you are speaking to the person so obviously automatically you are being very clever by manipulating with the words but you're not being manipulated with the outcome so using words as yes i understand yours is absolutely a valid point um instead of saying but and instead of putting instead of being very offensive or defensive you just have to be defensive not offensive right so you need to ultimately what matters is your outcome right so you need to make sure that if he is choosing x y and z you need to very cleverly ask him that yes this seems to be a good point but what is the weightage when we compare so and so with so and so right so if you are going to be asking hard questions to um the person who has like you know too much of ego and all that now of course rather than telling him no you need to tell no to the uh, road map that he wants to lead the entire team to right so then what happens it becomes easier for you to take the negotiation forward then what else how are you going to tackle or how are you going to you know uh, bury these conflicts okay let's just look conflict resolution methods okay so negotiation of course in conflict resolution you can show and draw on the same principles of collaborative negotiation that you use in deal making for example you should aim to explore the interests underlying parties positions just got a chat text one second criticize the act rather than the person yeah basically or uh, not exactly crit criticize you just object the act not the act you can just object uh not the person directly but you're just objecting the ideologies in a very subtle manner basically putting forward those hard questions and um you know uh drawing out the weightage of different alternatives so of course if your alternative is going to have like um uh what do you say like a higher benefit or a bigger benefit a bigger chunk of benefit in comparison to what they are offering it's all there ready on the paper for everyone to go ahead and accept what they clearly want so uh if you are ha having disputes or if you're having conflicts so the first thing is to sit down and focus on what their goals are 
your goal and their goal would be the same, but probably just differences in ideologies, right? So then making sure that you'll come to a consensus as to what ideology or what roadmap would eventually lead in uh, achieving those goals and objectives. So following everything on a roadmap, clearly shows goes to show that yes we are following um these we are following the roadmap not which i have suggested or not which you have suggested but obviously a roadmap that is going to win us the giant share or the lion's share or basically that is going to have us achieve all our goals that we want okay so the first thing is to sit down and focus on the main goal and for every alternative draw out the advantages and then once you have all the advantages, pros and cons of each alternative, and eventually choosing the best option. So that way you are not um, hurting anyone's ego, but you're just picking up the right option. Okay, so where will we? Okay, for example, you should aim to explore the interests underlying parties, positions, such as desire to resolve a dispute without attracting negative publicity or to repair a damaged business relationship. In addition, determine your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. So these are the, this is what a BATNA is. So what is a BATNA? Best alternative to a negotiated agreement. So what you will do if you fail to reach an agreement. So basically the BATNA is if I want, um, if I want the hostages to be released, right? If the government is not willing to release the hostages, what will I do? What is my best alternative? So if I'm not getting what I want, what is my best alternative to the negotiated agreement? So if, um, if I'm not, if they are not agreeing to give me a 25% hike, what is my best alternative? My best alternative is probably to just take a break, do some freelancing. And in the meanwhile, while I'm freelancing, obviously look for other options or probably start off with diff giving different interviews so that I get a minimum 30% hike. So that is my best alternative. But at no cost, I'm going to settle for anything less than 25% of a hike. Okay, so that's your button up finding a new partner or finding a lawsuit by brainstorming options and looking for trade-offs across issues okay so here disputants enlist a trained neutral third party to help them come to a consensus so mediation so a, a mediator basically uh what happens if two people cannot come together and solve their resolve solve their conflicts um so let us give an example for a marriage counselor okay so the man and the woman they are not able to come to a consensus they are having heated arguments every now and then and of course if you're going to intervene family the girl's family is obviously going to take on the girl's side the boy's family is also obviously going to take on the boy's side the boy's family so if you're going to uh, involve friends that may be a third party otherwise there are these marriage counselors who are neutral right so you may want to incorporate them making sure to come to a cons both the both the parties come to a consensus with a um you know with a proper solution so that's mediation with regards to conflict resolutions negotiation mediation and arbitration in arbitration, we can resemble a court trial. A neutral third party serves as a judge who makes decisions to end the dispute. The arbitrator listens to the arguments and evidences presented by each side, then renders a binding and often confidential decision. All the disputants cannot, typically cannot appeal an arbitrator's decision. They negotiate most aspects of the arbitration process, including whether lawyers will be present and which standards of evidence will be used. So again, uh, this is by relying on a third party so that there is, um, you know, legal understanding and uh, legal process of uh, bearing these conflicts or basically coming up with a solution. If whatever you are saying, I'm unable to agree with your points of view, what you are bringing to the table, I'm unwilling to agree. 
Of course, what are we left with? We are left with taking it legal, involving lawyers, judges, whatever, and coming to a consensus. Litigation in civil litigation. So most of the time you must have heard, you know, these terminologies uh, saying this is this uh, land is on litigation and stuff, right? Okay, civil litigation, a defendant and a plaintiff face off. Okay, so who's a plaintiff? What do you mean by a plaintiff? In civil litigation, a defendant and a plaintiff. So who's a plaintiff? Again, a defendant and a plaintiff. So quickly, what's a plaintiff? The person who brings a case, uh, who brings in the case against the other one, right? So a defendant is who? The person who is uh, defending himself. Why is he defending himself? Because the plaintiff has brought in the co the case to the co court. Okay, so a defendant and a plaintiff face off before each um, before each other um, to the judge and the jury, and they weigh the evidence and stuff, and then of course they take a uh, um, they come up with what is most neutral and which is the most fair decision to come out with. Okay, so that's the end with this module.